Hey, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, I'm going to look at resonance in series circuits. Now, resonance occurs when the reactance of a circuit is effectively eliminated, and it's going to occur at a particular frequency. And at that particular frequency, what happens is the effects of the capacitor and inductor right here cancel each other out. Now, let's take a look and see how that could happen. In this particular circuit, the total impedance is equal to the real part of the impedance, which is just the resistor, plus the reactive part of the impedance, the imaginary part of the impedance, which is based on the inductor here and the capacitor. So that's going to be JXL minus JXC. And we can combine these two terms into one. So if XL equals XC, that imaginary part, that reactive part of the circuit goes away. So let's take a look at when this will be true. Well, remember the equation for calculating the inductive reactance is 2 pi FL. And the equation for calculating the capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi FC. Well, remember I said that this resonance is going to happen at a particular frequency. Well, we can figure out what frequency that is with a little bit of algebra. So move this 2 pi C over to the left-hand side of the equation. And then isolate the F squared term on the left-hand side and then take the square root of both sides of the equation. So when frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of L times C, the reactive terms canceled out, and you end up with a total impedance that is simply equal to R. Okay, let's take a closer look at some of the finer points of the voltages and currents in this particular circuit. Well, it is a series circuit, so that current is going to be constant. And at resonance, ZT is R with a phase angle of zero degrees. So that works out to the magnitude of the current will be that V in or V1 over R, and it will have a phase angle of zero degrees. Now, what about the voltages across each one of these components? Well, the voltage across the resistor, well, for all of these, it's just going to be current times impedance of the, of the component. So this will be I with a phase angle of zero degrees times that resistance, which also has a phase angle of zero degrees. So we get a magnitude of IR with a phase angle of zero degrees. For the inductor, again, current times impedance, which is the inductive reactance with a phase angle of 90 degrees. So what we get here is IXL with a phase angle of 90 degrees. And the capacitor, again, current times impedance. So that will be IXC with a phase angle of 90 degrees negative 90 degrees. And remember at resonance, XL is equal to XC. So what that means is those two values there, the magnitudes of the voltages are equal, but they are 180 degrees out of phase. So that means they are going to completely cancel each other out. So effectively at resonance, the voltage across that entire thing there is zero. And in phasor form, that would look something like this. We'll have voltage from the resistor on the real axis. We'll have the voltage from the inductor on the positive imaginary axis, and we'll have the voltage of the capacitor also on the imaginary axis, but going in the opposite direction. And since those two numbers are equal to each other, the vector sum of this phasor and this phasor will be equal to zero. Now let's look at what happens with power in the circuit. Well, power of the resistor, the power that's used by the resistor, is equal to I squared times R. So that's what's going to be used up by the resistor. Now the reactive power of the inductor is I squared times XL, and the reactive power of the capacitor is I squared XC. Now in resonance, again, XL is equal to XC, so that means that this QL is equal to QC, but they are opposite of each other. So while the inductor is absorbing power, the capacitor is releasing power and vice versa. And since those values are exactly equal to each other, what we have is the power is just bouncing back and forth between inductor and capacitor. And if we were to illustrate this graphically on the real and imaginary axis, we would have the real power of the resistor. We would have the reactive power of the inductor and the reactive power of the capacitor. Those two values are equal to each other. So what we end up with is the apparent power of this circuit is simply equal to the power of the resistor. 
If you want to learn more, be sure to check out my website and you can find a link in the description below. There's all sorts of information on AC and DC circuits, as well as lots of practice problems to help you get ready for your exams. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.